Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I see what most people cannot see, and I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can actually be lonely. You can feel like more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens, the world looks different, and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. I'm about to coach two fascinating women. Veronica, who's worked in the corporate world for almost 20 years before becoming a coach, and Mahala, who worked as an, an economist and in international development for a long time before becoming a coach. Both are members of Transition Excellence, my community of high-level leaders who've left the corporate world to come and coach high-level leaders. It's a short conversation, but I'm always looking for that tiny moment of insight. And for each of them, it comes on the other side of their fear. I start the call with Veronica and, and she's apologetic. She says, I haven't got anything to be coached on. And I rub my hands in those moments because I love those moments. And, and we dive into this place of what's on the other side of fear for both of them. So my invitation as you listen in, let yourself be coached as I'm coaching them and, and leave with this question, what's scaring me right now? And what's on the other side of fear for me? Hi, Veronica. Hi, Mahala. So if you're listening in, the two people I'm speaking to today are members of a program that I run called Transition Excellence. And Transition Excellence is for a group of high-level leaders who want to become coaches to high-level leaders. It's a really fun program, runs for about 100 days, and we teach you some of the really powerful concepts in how to enroll amazing clients and coach amazing clients. And what I love about the members of our community is each of you are really powerful in your own right. You've done extraordinary things in the past, but having an extraordinary track record behind you doesn't stop you from having a big ambition ahead of you, right? We want to keep, still keep going. So Veronica, you said, you know, before I begin these, these podcast episodes and I coach people, I, I never ask anything about what you want coaching on. I like it to be real, but you were a bit apologetic when we had the intro, like, actually, I haven't got anything to be coached on. And I said, oh, that's great. Don't tell me anymore. I love that. I get this with clients a lot. They'll show up and say, kind of apologetic. Life's great. Um, things are going well. I've got nothing to talk about today. Be and that, that, there's a reason for that. The mindset from most people is that coaching is remedial. That when you have a problem, go and see a coach and the coach will help solve the problem. And coaching is great if you have a problem but it's really damn cool if you've got nothing going on and there's no problems because then we can just have a conversation and that's where the mag magic often really comes. So hi, Veronica. Hi, Rich. <laughs> what's going on? What's, what's on your mind right now? I'm a little bit excited <laughs> to be here and I'm very grateful for this opportunity as well. Yeah. Great. And what are you thinking about? What's, what's going on in your world? Oh, there is a lot going on actually right now. So um, I've, I've launched one program and I'm running that and I'm really committed to do that. Uh, even though they were little people, but I'm learning a lot and I'm really grateful for the opportunity just to know how to handle that and how to move forward with that. Well, when you That's, say little people, do you, is that just a translation? You mean a few people, right? A few people. <laughs> okay. <right. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and a lot has happened actually in the last week. So I, I'm, I started to write a book and this was like a huge goal that I had. So kind of impossible goal. Mm -hmm. And now I just committed to write every single day and now it doesn't seem impossible anymore. I have no idea what kind of book it's going to be, <laughs> but I'm just writing and enjoying it. So let's see what comes out of that. What was your background before you came into coaching, Veronica? 
I was working for corporate for many mm-hmm. years, 18 years. Mm-hmm. And I was working in different roles at corporate, mostly always related to the IT, but they were always between IT, people and strategy. Yeah. And so your, your background is understanding IT and is understanding strategy, right? Yes, and people, actually. So the last years in corporate, I was a transformation coach and I was um, responsible for the, um, the IT transformation um, of a whole unit. Mm-hmm. So that's very powerful. When I think of a Venn diagram with three overlapping circles, if there's IT and there's strategy and there's people, right in the center is you. Because in most organizations, Sometimes they understand IT, sometimes they understand technology, sometimes they understand strategy, mm-hmm. usually don't understand people. And there's, there's usually this gap because you've got one or maybe two of these three circles that people understand. Maybe they're great with people, nurturing them, they understand technology, but they're just not good at strategy. When you put all three together, that's something very unique. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's something that I wasn't so aware of. So it's like um, when I decided just to go for coaching, you know that I'm RTT therapist as well. And um, I was falling into the trap of putting too much um, attention on the on the labels, right? Oh, I am a coach, I'm an RTT therapist, but that's not true. I'm not, those are tools. So I've got, I've learned that lesson, right? Um, and actually right now I'm just becoming aware that um, there is more to that. And I actually got aware of that because one client gave me feedback and the feedback that he gave me was that I helped him to um, move forward with a digitalization project in his corporate, um, in, the, in, in the unit and the corporate that he is working. And that just was an eye opener because yes, of course I work with him in personal and how to lead that and go through that uncertain <laughs> process and topics like, um, confidence and things like that. But actually what just came out was that I gave him a lot of impulses and ideas on how to think about that, the topic that he was responsible of. And I like that. And I actually noticed that I enjoy working on these kind of topics as well, like more like the consultancy part, right? Nice. So what I love about your sharing is, and I talk about this a lot, but it's really worth emphasizing. Coaching is a tall not a title <laughs> to catch myself mm-hmm. it's a tall not a title and you're really embodying that what what you're also starting to point to is something that's become very interesting for me the idea of becoming a concierge trusted advisor mm-hmm. a trusted advisor where sometimes i'm a coach sometimes i'm a consultant sometimes i'm a mentor sometimes i'm a guide sometimes i'm a speaker it doesn't matter what you're doing at any moment but a concierge trusted advisor is when someone hires you, just like concierge medical, it wasn't around 10 years ago, but I have a concierge medical company that I use and it's it's quite expensive, but you're paying for the ability to have a service when you need it with Mm -hmm. access to world-class experts. And what I'm hearing with all that expertise you have, 20 years in corporate, the understanding of IT, understanding of um, uh, systems, understanding of people, and this ability to pull out these tools like coaching or consulting or mentoring, that there's an ability to offer something very unique in the marketplace here around being Mm -hmm. a concierge trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And actually, now that you're talking about that, there is something, I'm just feeling something inside of me that is just like, but that's not all. (laughs) It's like, um, and I think, that probably there is a part of me that I haven't put so much or just gotten into surface or giving so much expression um, and that I don't know how to handle and how to combine it. And I think that it's just because I'm afraid of doing that, right? <laughs> it's like the, the truth behind that. Um, and it's like the, the spiritual part of me that I've been just burying under tons and tons of layers while I was in corporate because I thought that that was not appropriate in that world, that that was not relevant and not wanted and not needed. And now I'm just, I've gotten out of this environment because I just wanted to to create my life the way that I want. And that's an important part of it. And I want to use it because I I think that it it makes an impact and it makes a difference, but I have no clue how. 
how to combine that. So, so this is what's cool about having a conversation where we don't know where it will go. Mm. We start riffing and talking about something and then there's a spark and here it comes in you like, oh, there's this deeply spiritual part of me that I had no either access to or ability to share in the corporate world. I mean, when was the last time you heard spirituality used in a corporate setting? It doesn't come up. Mm. I see your face, Mahala, right? It does, we, don't, we don't have any ability to talk about that. And it's a deeply important part of who you are and what, what it means to approach life for you. Mm-hmm. So here's my first thought. I think you'll be surprised that once you start talking about what really scares you, how quickly, A, it draws more interesting people to you, and B, people who you'd think would have no interest in this and never mentioned it to you will say, oh my gosh, me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the truth is that I've been starting <laughs> during the last few weeks. I've been starting posting these kind of things. And it has been challenging, right? Just feeling like a little bit quite very often some vulnerability hangovers. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, let me take you, Veronica, because I'm, you know me, you know how I think, right? I, I'm, I'm the, 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 everything happens in a conversation person. So I'm less interested in, did you post about it on your social media feed and did three of your friends put a like to it or, or, you know, there's a place for that. That's not this conversation. I'm much more interested in what next time you're on a call with a client and you say, all right, well, we've worked on the issue that you talked about today. I've got a different question for you. When was the last time you thought about something deeply spiritual in the workplace or have you ever used intuition as a leader? And you ask an open-ended question and watch what happens. Because it's going to be in those relationships, those connections, that you mm-hmm. start to open the door and see what happens. Mm-hmm. I can do that. I, and I think that that's an easy question for me to play. So that, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Mm-hmm. What would be scary for you? Um, what would be scary? Hmm. I don't know. I'm quite living in a scary place right now because I'm pushing myself quite um, over. I'm in, in, in a discomfort zone right now, so, but, but it's fine. I, I'm choosing to do that. And um, yeah. All right. I love, I love if, if you're listening in, Veronica's just, she's just off. She's thinking now she's in reflection mode. Well, what would be scary? Or Already I get you're living in a scary place and uh, yeah. not so scary that you can't move but maybe edgy and, yeah. and you're doing things that are edgy on a, on a regular basis. So let me leave you there. Let me take you off the hot seat, let you simmer for a minute mm-hmm. and come to Mahala. Hey, Mahala. Thank you. Hi. Hey, um, any insights you've had for any of that for yourself? Uh, I think it's perhaps off a conversation that Veronica and I had some time ago. Um, but often for me, and I know Veronica's a little the same because we know each other a bit now. Um, Often, for me, the scary thing is to not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know once when we've had this conversation, the scary thing for her in the past has been to take a few days off. <laughs> so that's what came to mind when she was, that might not be relevant for her now, but, and that, that's what resonates with me sometimes. It's the not doing, which is far scarier than the doing. Oh, well, yeah. When, when you talk to talented, ambitious, driven people, the mm-hmm. scariest thing to do is to slow down and do nothing. Uh, actually... It's the place where when you're a coach to very successful leaders, the, the biggest impact you'll have is when you get them to slow down. And it will be a very hard thing to do. If they've never considered it before. So I, I like that insight. Uh, you know, it sounds like you want to go somewhere different today. How can I support you in this conversation? Um, yeah, so when I originally signed up to be coached by you on the podcast, I really wanted to dig into my mission a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
um, because I've been talking about it and not feeling 100% conviction in it and wondering if there was something more, something more personal that I wasn't sharing. Um, but since saying that, I've now done some thinking on it. So I'm a bit clearer on what maybe two of my missions might be and roughly how they might, but I'd still like to dig into that a bit more because I don't really know what that means for me. Cool. Tell me more. What, what you say two of your missions, what are these? Two? <laughs> and I don't think they're completely um, separate. So I guess I'm really passionate about equality of opportunity. So no matter where you're born in the world, that you have the same opportunity to reach your potential. It shouldn't really matter where you are. And I guess that's, something that I've been working on my whole career as a, a development economist in different sectors and different guises, working on improving access to opportunity in countries, especially around Africa that I've spent a lot of my career in. Um, and the simple story is that I used to do that work. I used to be doing work in economic development and international development. And now I coach people that are doing that. So now I'm kind of coaching the change makers as opposed to doing it myself. And that's a really simple story. And that's something that I'm incredibly passionate about still. Um, but I think there's also something a lot more personal behind why I'm doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. and exploring that in the last couple of weeks. Um, like my own coach, me, coach took me through kind of what's really helped me to take big leaps in my life. And I think whenever I've taken great leaps in my career, even in my personal life, it's been because there's someone there who's believed in me. Mm. Um, and that's been really clear. And when I've stagnated, it's been when I've just been running on my own self-belief. And at some point that's run out. I think when I've had someone believing in me, especially a manager, sometimes a mentor, then I take great leaps and bounds. And I guess linked to the opportunity or the equality of opportunity, it really distresses me to think that there are people out there that don't have people believing in them to do great things in the world. So I think that personally, I can feel a lot of <laughs> emotion around that. And that, I guess that's the personal driver that I don't want anyone to feel like they don't have people believing in them um, to do the things they want to do in the world. I, I don't see a distinction between the two. I, I, one says like a strategy. One of the ways to help with equality of opportunity is to have someone who you know believes in you relentlessly, no matter what you're feeling and going through yourself. Um, but it's just part of what is really important to you is making sure that there's a quality of opportunity for people across the planet. Yeah. Yeah. What I love about coaching, go, go, share that thought. I say, I think part of me was wondering, do I, is it that big grand lofty vision? Am I just, is this still my ego coming out? Um, but actually I was listening to an audio book just a couple of days ago while I was questioning this, it was a book called The Hunger Project. I mm -hmm. oh, no, The Soul of Money, it was about The Hunger Project. And um, um, so it's a good book, it triggered me a lot. I took a really long time to get through it and I thought it's because I didn't enjoy the woman's voice who was reading it. But I think actually on reflection, it triggered me so much in one point that I actually burst into tears. And I think I've got a lot of unfinished business in that area. And I think it is like, it, it, I guess it reignited the fact that I have got unfinished business in that area and it does still drive me. I was just wondering whether it's my ego getting in the way. Which, which area, around money? Where is it, where's the unfinished business? Oh no, sorry. Um, the Hunger Project is about providing sustainable livelihoods in um, Africa and Asia, yep. uh, feeding people, but in a sustainable way. So her, she's worked, the, the lady who wrote it, I can't remember her name. She's done a lot of work in, in international development. Yeah. Um, and it triggered me so much. I think maybe I was a little bit jealous of what she's achieved in that area. Uh, nice. I think that's why I struggled to finish the book because I was like, oh God, and I left that career and now I'm coaching. And now I don't feel like I'm having the impact that I used to have in, in governments, in big NGOs. Um, so I'm glad it triggered me. I think this is the right path for me, but now maybe, you know, I'm just coaching a dozen people. I'm feeling like this is great, but maybe it's not enough. Right. So I love that energy, that energy of, of, of um, feeling triggered. There's something there for you. Mm -hmm. What I love about coaching is that I get to work with high level leaders to leverage my impact. So what, where I see you could have made a, an impact in the world of international development. Now, if and when you get to work with the right leaders, and it will come over time, but you can coach a dozen extraordinary leaders and you've got 12 times at least the impact you used to have. 
So there's something really powerful in there that becomes your mission. Like I want to have 10 times the impact I used to have. So I need to filter very carefully now for the kind of leaders I want to work with. And then you begin to really up-level the game that you play. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. How does that feel? Is that exciting? Is that scary? Is that a uh, wrong direction? I think that is the right direction. And I think it's a little scary up, up leveling more than I have done. Yeah. Um, but also I, I know that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You've heard me use the, before this line, you know, stop looking for clients who you can inspire and look for clients who inspire you. And that's intimidating at first. Mm -hmm. well, they're, they're inspiring to me. Why would they want to work with little old me is that thought that comes into our mind. Well, the reason they'll work with you is because they might be the best on the planet doing what they do, but they're human. And when you're human, there's one thing that you can guarantee is that your thinking is going to get in the way and cloud your judgment about what you're up to next. That's the nature of being human. And, and we can't do it for ourselves. That's why we often have coaches, but you could do it for these people and you understand their world and you understand how they think and what gets in the way. So that would be really exciting to see that happen over the next 12 months that you keep upping the bar for the caliber of people that you work with. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I, I want you to feel, my desire for you is to feel intimidated each time you speak to the next caliber of client, you feel a little bit more intimidated than the last time. Yeah, that sounds like a good challenge. Veronica, I see you smiling and I, I can see you want that for her too, right? <laughs> Absolutely, I, I see her definitely there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too, me too. And so what do you get from that piece of the conversation for you, Veronica? To me, it's actually that's very often this change of perspective opens up a possibility that we thought that we had left behind, but that's not true. We still have that. It's just that we need to look from, from a different, different angle mm -hmm. into that. And then we see that we still can have the impact that we want to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're listening or watching and you're, um, if you ever run groups, one of the most thing, fun things about running a, a group coaching session is what I've just done. Each time I've coached either Veronica or Mahala, I've asked the other person, what's an insight that you've had? And, and it's often not directly related to what I'm coaching the person on. But if you're open in this moment in a coaching scenario and you're, and you're open to being coached, even if you're not on the hot seat, people get insights in every moment. So if ever you're wondering about how do I lead a group coaching session, well, you can lead a group coaching session by coaching one person at a time and creating a space for insight for everyone who's there. Veronica, what, what's the single biggest takeaway you've got from our conversation? Keep leaning in mm. and include that part, that spiritual part, and do it in an easy way with open questions. Nice. I like that. And I like the thought too, for me, coaching is deeply spiritual and yet I don't ever use that word. And I think there's a space and a place for you because that enlivens you so much to begin to look at whether or not you use the word to dive into it more and more with your clients. I think you'll be surprised what happens. And one of the things it will do is we'll filter out those of your clients who are interesting, but, but, but there's a little piece missing for you that you'll gradually let go of. And you'll find some extraordinary people who work in corporate, entrepreneurs, business owners, who have this deeply spiritual part of themselves, as well as a desire to make a difference, to make an impact. I think it'd be really fascinating for you to play this game. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> okay. yeah. How about you, Mahala? What's, what's the single biggest takeaway from today? That I'm on the right path. Mm. That I need to, not need to that I know I've been playing a smaller game than I could be and it's time to it's time to level up. Nice. So what I hear in common with both of you is lean into that edge of discomfort. L you know, look for what really scares you and then just take a 4% step towards what's scary. Not so big it overwhelms you, but just little steps 
at a time in the direction of fear. Fear, I like to say, is a mask for desire. It's only scary because you really, really want it. And sometimes we're scared because if we, uh, we might not get it. And sometimes we're scared because, well, what if I get it? What if I get these high level leaders who are deeply spiritual? What on earth have I got to offer them? What if I get half a dozen leaders in the world of international development and they're more successful than I ever was? How would I ever coach them? That for me is interesting. And that's my desire for both of you. Thank you both. Thank you so much, Rich. Yes, thank you. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.